What is going on, everybody? We are live, and welcome to episode number eight of the Tarsus Tavern, your anthem community talk show and podcast. My name's Sean. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Um, if you're here for the first time, the way that we like to uh, run the show generally is with a co-host. Uh, Mr. Mr. Scotty Mack generally joins me. Uh, he is pre preoccupied this evening, I believe, with his uh, with his path Pathfinder tonight. So he will not be joining me, but uh, hopefully next week he will be able to uh, to join us in the tavern. And I, I think maybe this week it might be a good idea because I'm going to go off kind of on a little bit of some savage rants tonight and and kind of get some stuff off of my chest that I've been uh I've been wanting to talk about and I've been wanting to think about and, and kind of mull over for the last week and kind of bounce it off you guys you know the the anthem community that comes into the streams every week you know what not so much rage but just like have an open discussion about the state of the game uh some things that have happened obviously within the game um here the last week or so i mean we all know about the kotaku article we all know like we all know what's going on with the game but there's just so few places for us to actually just sit down and talk about it so think about this this program if you're here for the first time almost like uh if you were to go into like the just chatting section of twitch and kind of do that but it's for anthem right so uh, I welcome everybody's comments in the chat as long as they are constructive. Okay, if we have anybody come in here screaming, EA is the devil, this game sucks, blah, 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 uh, they will be removed immediately. Okay, I want you guys to know that again. My channel is a safe and conducive place for constructive discussion. Uh, our topics here are in are on the uh, the bottom left. So we're gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about my week uh, in review which means just my week in, in Anthem. Then we're going to get into the, uh, the Kotaku article a little bit. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the article itself because we've all read it. We understand what it is. I want to talk a bit a little bit more uh, about what I feel the, the, the article actually means um, and kind of what I think this guy was trying to do because I think there's some very, very pointed discussions in other directions. And I've said this throughout the week. I think Anthem was just the unfortunate target of a of a bigger issue, right? Within within the games development uh, uh, industry, which I, I don't know much about. Unfortunately, I just I hear as much as you guys do. If there's anybody here that works in games development, I would love to hear from you. Please put your comments in the chat. But I do see a lot of similarities to a profession that I used to do myself. And that's, that's working in restaurants. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, then we're going to go into uh, this week's updates. And then we're going to discuss uh, content creators. Content creators who uh, have dropped this game like a, a hot potato after being uh, given what I feel are some fantastic opportunities. Uh, there was another big one today that, uh, that announced that he is dropping um, kind of, I guess, focused uh, content creation for anthem and there's a lot of guys that are kind of dropping like flies uh unfortunately in terms of the world of, of anthem in terms of uh content creation we'll get into that a little bit more i think there's there's some things that need to be said there because i think a lot of people were given some fantastic opportunities and they're not following through uh eh generally is a devil but they helped uh, put out a lot of solid game that just needs ongoing support yeah you know what man we're, we're going to talk about that that's part of the discussion tonight definitely for sure so uh, let's start, I mean, with with the, the, the bombshell that started this whole thing this week, and that is the Kotaku article. Um, Jason uh, Schreer, I think is how you pronounce his name, uh, dropped this bomb of, a, of an article. It is, it is a beast. If you haven't read it yet, it is 11,000 words. Um, it goes into everything from the beginning of what Anthem was supposed to be. Uh, it goes into the production cycle, the the dev cycle. Apparently, he's he talked to many many people that uh, worked on the game and then left. Uh, it talks about stress within the industry. It talks about the many many different changes that uh, that Anthem went through during the the uh, development process. Uh, again, it is a big 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 article. Way too much for us 
to go through on stream, but there were a couple of points here that I did want to kind of touch on uh, in terms of what I think it all what I think it all means. So one thing that I need to get kind of get off my chest here a little bit is I'm gonna go to his Twitter here. So this is Jason Schreer, you know, of course, you know, selling his book here, right? Everybody has an agenda. And this guy definitely had an agenda with what he was doing here, I believe. Um, he dropped this article on Tuesday of last week and then had an article come out in the New York Times on Thursday? On Friday. On Friday, also about the games industry. So let's be very clear about something. This Jason guy absolutely had an agenda. Um, he says here... Down below, where is the tweet? Uh, I, follow, I filed this piece a few weeks ago, so it is a happy coincidence that it's out right after the Bioware piece. Um, I think this is complete bullshit. I, this guy, again, and again, guys, I'm going to go a little savage here tonight, so please, if you have any comments, please put them in the chat. Um, I, I think this is complete crap. I think this guy knew exactly the timing of these articles um, and, and knew exactly what he, he, he was doing. Um, this guy is looking to make a splash within the games development industry. This guy is trying to start a movement, which is fine. Right, right, raw. That, yeah, and that yes, yes, for sure, raw. That is what he tried to do here, um, which is which is perfectly fine. But we need to also make sure that we understand that everybody has an agenda, uh, and that it was not a it was not a coincidence that this article came out after the Bioware one. Um, so it, it's definitely great that he does this. Uh, he says here, video game makers need unions. Was any of this article deemed to be? Uh, not to be factual. I don't know. I mean, it, it's tough to say, Maddie, because it's just, you know, I talked to former devs who none of them were named. They were just former devs and people that worked on Anthem that were at EA and Bioware. So people are never, ever going to reveal their names. So you have to take in stride what those people are saying. And that actually, another, that actually brings up another point too, right? Has anybody ever left a job that you're not mad about things? Has anybody ever left a job? Hand up. If you've if you've never, please let me know if you've never left a job and had ill feelings towards your employer. Raw, these conditions are well known and already documented from other companies within the industry. The issues is common, happens in all the yeah, and this is what I'm trying to say here is that all week I've been saying it didn't matter what game this was. This could have been the division two, it could have been Devil May Cry Five, this could have been any game that had a rough development start and this guy could have written this same article with the same kind of thoughts behind it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and that's what everybody says. It's almost like a slave ship. It's like, it's big hours. It's long hours. It's weekends, that kind of thing, which brings up a, a, an interesting correlation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually a Red Seal certified chef and the culinary industry and restaurant industry actually works the same way. You know, it's, it's, it's big time weekends overtime hours so i understand kind of the grind of what some people within the games development industry maybe are going through so i think you need to take this article more with with the grain of salt that i mean yes it, it's it's bad and it's it's disorganized what, what what happened with anthem but this could have been any any game yeah, restaurants should be unionized, and this is what this guy is saying here too. He's saying he's saying in this New York Times article that video game makers need to unionize, and maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's a good idea, but what I think what needs to be put into focus here is that you know Anthem is just the target. Um, the other thing that uh, is kind of concerning for me too is that he goes into the development cycle and how there was like in internal struggles and that kind of thing with the game. Um, and that it was a fresh idea. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think it's, there's anything wrong with a developer trying to do a fresh idea. I think what happened with Bioware on Anthem is they tried a fresh idea. They couldn't bring, they couldn't bring it together. And then they ran out of time. I don't think it's wrong that Anthem is a fresh idea, guys. And they get, and they get so 
like criticized for this being oh, it was a fresh idea and they couldn't handle it and da 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 and they couldn't do this and they couldn't do that. I don't think it's bad that they tried to do a new idea. Right? I don't think it's bad. Wouldn't the unionization of the video game makers kind of destroy the indie game makers? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it kind of would. Yeah, and that's what generally happens, right? Is that is that unions at the top are great for the big guys, but then the uh, the small guys really, really kind of get buried, right? Um, yeah, and, and other, I just have some notes here too. Bioware changing as a studio does not mean Anthem cannot be great. So the problem with this article as well too is that it puts it in, in the light, you know, that what went wrong, right? What went wrong? And there's very, very little, I think, except near the end. Thank you, Cherry Blossom, for that uh, gifted sub to expand the candy. Appreciate that. Uh, till the very end, where he talks about... Where is it here? Where's the actual end? Because he makes a, they make a statement. Um... Where is it? 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 Yeah, uh, I think Anthem might be the, the kick in the butt that Bioware leadership needed to see, uh, see how you develop games has changed uh, dearly. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with change within the industry. There's nothing wrong within change within your workplace. Um, I, I, I really, really want to see if this guy in you know, three months from now, four months from now, six months from now, will take a stance to write a, um, a, a new article. He says here, when, they, when the Anthem team started developing back in 2002, they hoped to make the Bob Dylan of video games, one that might be referenced and remembered for generations. They might have accomplished that, just not in quite the way they hoped. And that's what we need to do, to, to keep in mind as players, too, is that, sure, the game didn't come out how they hoped, but there is still hope. Period. Period. Uh, he also goes in the article too as well um, that old perspectives, you know, it, that a lot of people left, right? And that people think that a lot of people leaving means that the developer is in trouble. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're in trouble, right? I mean, old perspectives need to go for things to change. People leaving Bioware is actually not a bad thing. You don't want a developer studio to remain in one place forever and this is why they wanted to do i believe that they wanted to do anthem and the problem was is that maybe they just weren't equipped to do it yet and and again that's okay we're going to see some of the responses from some bioware people here um you can see on the top of my stream from twitter here uh specifically casey hudson uh and it's okay it's okay to, to, to have people leave a company. I mean, I was with the company I was with for eight years and I was let go three weeks ago because I was not a fan of the changes that were happening within the company. I made my voice known and they said, well, you know what? We want people that are just going to drink the Kool-Aid and you're not one of them, Sean. So see you later. So eight years, they just went, see ya. Um, you know, changing, changing people and, and new people and new blood coming in, I don't think it's a bad thing, but this article goes in as if it's like the doom of Bioware. I, I don't, I, I just don't think it's accurate. Uh, what else do I have here? Um, yeah, employees will, will always be, will always be mad. This is likely why they were able, you know, wanting to talk to him. Um, and, and I think overall, too, Diablo 3 and Destiny recovered, so I believe that Anthem can, too. And there's very, very little in this article that talks about the progression and what's next for Anthem. This, to me, is very much a hit piece on EA, on Bioware, and on the games industry with somebody that had it, multiple articles in the chamber that he knew were going to release one after the other, trying to propel this guy's... Um, uh, career up. The other thing that really bothers me about this article 
was just a bunch of hate mongering and attention seeking. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think it has good points there, Raw, for sure. But yeah, in in the way that's the way that is presented, it's very very, um, just very like like doom like doom and gloom doom and gloom. Like if you go to if you go to the top of the article, okay, this is how the article starts. This is how we start this off. It wasn't even supposed to be called Anthem. Just days before the annual E3 convention in June 2017, when the store when the storage studio Bioware would reveal its newest game, the plan had been going to go with a different title, Beyond. They even printed out Beyond t-shirts for the staff. So at this point, we're starting this article with Doom and Gloom. Doom and Gloom. I have much more respect for somebody that is able to write constructively uh, rather than negatively. And the other thing that bothers me too, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the bottom of this article, and then we're going to move on from the article and kind of get into the response from Bioware. Uh, which they have here. So he says, minutes after the publication of this article, EA Bioware put up a blog post, which we will, in in apparent response. What does apparent response mean? It is a response, and we will take a look at the response in a minute. Uh, the post explains the lack of comment for our article based on assumption of what the article would focus on, which they have every right to do. They Let's make something clear, guys. Bioware and EA don't have to fucking respond to anybody they don't have to respond to anything this this world that we live in that people think that everything requires a response is asinine you don't have to respond to that tweet you don't have to respond to that email you don't have to respond to that text you don't have to call that person back and particularly in situations like these no company is in any obligation to respond to a you know journalist that says anything yeah uh sino sino uh no i haven't no no i feel like i got something different out of the, just showed that uh something different out of the article i felt like he wasn't attacking the game he was attacking the system that allows devs to be treated like shit and pull something out that was basically developed in a year and a half because the ceo wanted something different than they presented originally am i wrong i thought he was just showing how bad devs have it and this game was his case study. Uh, yes, it, it is a lot of that for sure. But I, 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 I just, I just feel like this was very calculated, right? He knew, he knew obviously, and had inside information that possibly Anthem was going to go the way it, way it was going to go, and he wrote this ahead of time. I mean, the amount of people he interviewed that that takes time. He interviewed like nineteen people. The only way I can see it being responsive is posted uh, within the article, hour of the article. If not, I feel it may have been worked on well before the hit piece was posted. Right, right. So I think I think EA and Bioware probably knew that this article was coming. And you know what it is? It is. And that's what I'm trying to say, right? Is that is that this is a case study, and I'm okay with a case study on the way the games are developed. I'm okay with that. The problem becomes is when people think, well, the game is garbage, the game is this, the game is that, da, 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 and then they don't move on to the future, which we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about the future of the game, and nobody ever in this world of social media and instant messaging and all that kind of stuff wants to talk about the future and what is to come. Ever. Ever. Um... And then the response to Bioware, which we're going to do here. Uh, while our article named some senior people at Bioware, and while we ask about the roles of various leaders of Bioware during the game's development, readers can judge for themselves whether Bioware's assumption about our article were correct. We don't think they were. We believe in asking questions and publishing what we can find out. We hope that uh, in the future, EA and Bioware will see the value of that process. So basically, this 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 statement here, I think, is very pompous, in my opinion. We believe in asking questions and publishing what we can find out. We hope that in the future, EA and Bioware will see the value of that process. Again, EA and Bioware, let's make this very, very clear, are not in any sort of obligation to respond to anything that Kotaku, that anybody says. Uh, the fact that they're pushing this basically means 
you know, we're going to continue to ask questions and we're going to publish what we find out, whether you like it or not. You know, you can either, you know, give us, give us our props or tell us that we're wrong. You know, this is basically them saying, well, you know, are we, we're not wrong. Are we wrong? We're not wrong. This is a very, very pompous response, uh, in, in my opinion, to this, uh, to this response from Bioware. Now let's go to, let's go to the response from Bioware, which, uh, some people didn't like, um, but I, I am, I am perfectly fine with. And the reason why I'm perfectly fine with it folks is because I come from a, uh, I come from a business background working for a very large international company, uh, of, of almost eight years. So I, I understand how responses like this kind of work and what they're trying to do. So, um, let, let's make this very clear, guys. This response has very, very little about the development of the game. What this response has mainly is uh, wording wording that tackles the article going into workplace environment, workplace culture, uh, and, and the crunch time, right? Because Bioware also understands... And EA also understands that this article overall is not really about an anthem. It's about the state of the games industry and how games are made. And this is 100% more of an HR uh, response more than PR, right? So if this if this was a PR response, they would talk about the game and what they're doing with the patches and what the game is going to have and da 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 Because if it... If they were concerned about the game and the state of the game, the future of the game, they would talk about the game. But most of this is, you know, as a studio and a team, we expect all criticisms that will come our way for the games we make, especially from our players, create a process, da da da. You know, and again, you know, they use the word crunch time and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, helped us make bigger, bigger steps to improve studio culture and create a focus. We will go to some of Casey Hudson's responses uh, in, in my Twitter up here. Uh, in just a few minutes, but this is, let's be clear, guys, this is an HR response to workplace environment and worse workplace culture more than anything else. Anything else. Let's get some stuff here from the chat. Uh, I play a lot of Call of, Duty, Call of Duty, and right now the current game studio is under fire too, but for uh, milking money out of everyone with microtransactions, yep, yep. Yeah, ma imagine if Anthem shipped with loot boxes. Imagine if Anthem launched with loot boxes, guys. It would have been DOA. It would have been dead on arrival. Uh, this game is just easier to reference because it's it's right now, right, right, right. And it was also the uh, the most marketed game of the year. Uh, it also sold a ton. So all those things make Anthem a very very easy target to write a hit piece on the state of the games industry and what's going on within Bioware. And again, it is okay for a company to go through changes. I mean, are, 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 are we the same person we were yesterday? Are we the same person we were five years ago? Are we the same person we were 20, 20 years ago, guys? You know, workplace environments change, things change, people change. And sometimes things go wrong. Yeah, Denver started that happened. We saw that from Battlefront 2. Right, right, right. And they knew that if they had loot boxes or anything in this game, this game was D O A. D O A. So, uh, the, the response for me is fine. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, they're not even talking about this or talking about that. And, and, and the response, you know, is just terrible. And, it, and it's so, you know, it's so mute, it's so deaf and mute and blah, 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 blah. This is a fine response from a company that really, again, does not have to fucking say anything. So, Mr. Jason uh, Schreer, of course, um, in his pinned tweet, tells us that he's extremely excited to sell his next book which i'm sure the um let's see here i think it's like one million i don't know i don't know i don't really much kotaku but what, what do the fire things mean is that like a like the one five one point five million likes 1k comments on this article i'm sure we'll have a whole bunch of new fans to uh to buy his new book and uh, I'm sure the New York Times article helped him. So let's remember that everybody has an agenda, right? 
So let's talk about some of the responses from Bioware, I, which I think are actually, again, very, very good. Um, Casey Hudson, who is referenced in the article, uh, actually left Bioware and they came back as the general manager says, I think some people are seeing our support for our developers named in the article as dismissing the need to continue making improvements in our workplace. Not at all. Part of what interested me about returning to Bioware was the challenge of building a new leadership team around solving precisely these problems. We have more to do, but creating a happy and rewarding work environment remains our top priority. So, um, can, can, we, can we admit that Anthem was probably developed within a workplace environment that was not great? Yes. But what we can see here is that they're working to fix it. And unfortunately, in our world of instant media and instant judgment and instant social justice, people are not willing to take a step back and see the responses and see that things are going to try and change. Now, that's because mostly people don't see the day-to-day -day interactions and the day-to-day -day of what these people are doing. Uh, they don't know what case is doing, that kind of thing. Um, so everybody just judges. Now, interesting thing here, I think, is if you look at this guy here, Patty, his response I thought was so interesting. It's the first response. Uh, we as consumers must shoulder some of this blame being handled, uh, handed around. People expect far too much and immediately. Completely agree. Yes, community feedback is vital, but people need to remember you're not robots. Balance is key. So for what it is, Casey Hudson, thank you. And this is really, really important too, is that people just expect so much, so much instantly, instant gratification. Uh, people will judge instantly. Social justice is insane in our current world. Uh, it's something that really, really bothers me. And it's definitely happening with this situation here. Would they have worked uh, to fix if the article was never on the horizon? Yes, of course. Of course, we see we see Jesse Anderson, we see Mike Gamble, we see everybody that's working on the game saying we are connect, we are committed to this game. Uh, Chin holds. I think the Kotaku article made a mistake dropping names in a negative light in its article. Good luck getting insider access on new gaming IPs from any developer in the future. You can't trust him. Ah, ding, 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 ding. Yep. But you know what, though, Chin Holds? I don't think this guy cares. I think this guy, uh, this Jason guy, did what he wanted to do. He had two or three bullets in the chamber already, right? Like, his, his you know, ha happy coincidence that the New York Times article came out three or four days after the Kotaku one, that's not coincidence. He knew what he was doing. It was, it was bang, bang. So yeah, this guy probably realizes that he is now uh, talked about within circles within the game developer industry and will probably get zero access to any game ever again. Exactly. Yep, Taz, welcome. Yep. Yeah, he got, his, he got his name out there. He got a million and a half likes on his article on Kotaku. He got a New York Times article. He has a new book coming out, right? New book, buy my stuff, right? Uh, this guy knew what he was doing, but I think it's really, really important to see some of the responses, in particular from Casey Hudson here, that are saying like, like we realize, we realize our environment was not good, and we're working on it. Uh, 150k, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy was well known. Again, this guy was well known for writing stuff like this. 150k on Twitter, uh, but again, uh, you know, you 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 have to next level yourself somehow, Jodat, and this was the way he did it. M2, I don't judge much of the developers by uh, the E3, but to find out that the game show was just developed for E3, and by that point, they didn't have a game to show, that for me showed huge lies on Bioware's part. Absolutely, yes, yes. I agree, yeah, yeah, and, and I think they realized that some of that stuff wasn't truthful and that things need to change, and I don't think, you know, what the, the next big title is, is uh, Dragon Age 4 for bioware right it's dragon age 4 and i don't think you will see a lot of the same mistakes and the same things that happen with this in in dragon age 4 uh franchi he's using anthem as a stepping stone yeah and that's what i'm saying that's what i've said guys yeah this this could have been any game that had a rough start if if the division 2 had a rough start he probably would have went after ubisoft 
if Devil May Cry had a rough start. I mean, that's a little bit different. Anyways, the game didn't matter. The game doesn't matter. The the what what is what the the meat of the issue is is the game's developer industry, and this guy is trying to be like some sort of white knight for those people, which is fine. You can do that, and I think it needs to change. But don't also make it, you know, hey, I have a New York Times article, and oh, by the way, I have a new book coming out, and oh, by the way, you know, all this other stuff, right? If you're going to do this for, like, you know, like real journalism that you want people to take you seriously for and not just boost your career, obviously, then I think it's a little bit better to go about things a different way. Did the gaming industry as a whole need this kick up the ass? Uh, from what I understand, Active, it did. Why didn't he just release a sex tape like everyone else is trying to sell something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think we see responses from Casey Hudson and everybody here um, that that they know that they're, they're trying to change. They're trying to change. I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah, Joda. Yeah, I've heard Joda has a nice one too. Nice little sex tape. That needs to be released. Jodat. I don't know if I want to see Jodat in that way. Uh, Flying Wraith. Uh, the clickbaiters want people to think they care when all they really care about are followers and subscribers, which means money in their pockets. Ooh, Flying Wraith. That is an interesting topic as well, too, that we're going to touch on tonight as part of our discussion. Um, let's move on. to our other topics here which are this week's update so this week's update folks let's talk about something a little bit positive here this week's update mr jesse anderson my man community manager talking about this week's updates i've seen reports from players in anthem game who are getting components for javelins they aren't using good news we've got an uh, update rolling out at 9 a.m on monday april 8th there really is a chance that can happen this update also makes loot earned from unleashing cash show up immediately after Stronghold, fixes the issues where the news feed is blank, and more. Full list will be posted Monday morning. So, Monday morning, guys, we have an update for Anthem coming. So this, I believe, is the first of two updates coming for this game, right? So we knew that there was a, uh, a more of a fix update coming, like this one here that Jesse says, with some quality of life stuff and some good changes. Um, and then we have, hopefully, at the end of the month, fingers crossed, we have our content patch and update. How many people are hyped for this? I'm going to be on Monday. I, I just released my uh, menu stream schedule on Monday. So I will be definitely be playing. Um, yes, I will, I will be playing with this when this update drops. It's 7 p.m. EST on Monday. You're hyped for it? Yes. Everybody seems super hyped for updates. And uh, again, I, I think this really goes back to the future of the game. We know they're working on it. Give it time. What are your hopes for the new mastery system, how it works, etc.? Um, I don't know, man. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think it might be the skill tree. You know, the skill tree would be nice. Uh, they originally had that in the game, but then they took it out last minute. Uh, Taz, I'm excited for it. Need more lemon drops? Yes, buddy. I'm hyped. Looking forward to the update and hoping we can get more news on the use of luck. With the, with every update, the game gets better, in my opinion. Yep. Yep. It absolutely does. And I hope in, you know, three, four, five, six months from now that all these people will come back to the game and say, hey, you know what? They've done a lot of positive things with it. It looks good. Hype. Absolutely. Yes. So, update on Monday super stoked for that now that people are saying that bioware should treat their devs better how many people are bashing jesse and uh his tweet about the update let's take a look let's take a look i don't think i don't think there's much uh hate for jesse on this hold on uh it's it's mainly just about loot drops loot drops loot drops give me you know 30 legendaries to play session loot drops loot drops loot drops Loot drops, loot drop, loot drops. I'm maxed out on my javelin. Can't get any more loot drops. Uh, that they lied. Blah blah blah. There's there's a little bit of hate. 
there's a little, there is a little bit of hate here, but I mean that's expected again for people on the internet. To say, I know you haven't even got uh, five man. Yo, I got lots of legendaries, man. You want to see my inventory? All right, let's move on to our last little rant session of the evening here, and that is content creators in Anthem. So. This one here I've been talking about for a few days now on stream. Super, super frustrated with the amount of uh, content creators that I'm seeing dropping Anthem. And it's gotten worse, guys. It's gotten worse. Um, I believe that many, many YouTubers that were making content for uh, Anthem have left. Uh which it can be understandable, right? I mean, that the bigger the bigger time content creators need stuff to make all the time, right? They need they need daily videos. Most of them, the big guys need daily videos, and right now, there is not much content coming out for Anthem to make content on. Um, and Maddie, you're absolutely right, man. So I think right now the best way to be making Anthem content is not YouTube videos, but live streaming. And I'm surprised that a lot of these YouTuber guys have not clicked into that, that the way that this game is going to be kind of seen in the future is by live streaming. And there's just maybe not going to be enough coming out right now to make a whole bunch of YouTube videos. Now, this week might be might be different because we're going to get a huge content update, right? So at the end of this month, you're going to see all these guys come back that have dropped the game like a hot potato making YouTube videos. So... Be prepared, be, be prepared for that. I welcome new faces. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where Daisy is a good example. Uh, loads of content creators left Daisy now with the latest patch. Viewership has over 7K yesterday. Right, right. And this is how many people have been in my channel. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. And I have said, support the people who are here now. Support the people that are here now. Myself. Zerilia, um, Flexi, Black Reaper has been, right? Cherry Blossom. Because this is the way this stuff works, guys, right? This is the way this stuff works, is every update you're going to see new faces. And it's cool, and they might be great streamers and great content creators, but... Uh, for for me, there, it's 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 an integrity issue. It's an integrity issue, guys, and that's that's how I feel, is that it is an integrity issue, and this is why it bothers me. And this comment here really, really sets uh, off my spidey sense, because this is what I thought off the hop. So this uh, title is Anthem Content, but it's all Destiny 2 YouTubers. So what happens to people who only want to pay attention to Anthem Content and want nothing to do with De uh, Destiny 2? This game gets ribbed enough as is for being apparently a D2 clone. I don't know who's calling this a D2 clone. I don't know why I see all these D2 players. I get it, they have millions of subs. I am not trying to say that they aren't worth having here. Please don't take this post this way, but I want nothing to do with D2. I don't want that content in my feed or in my life. So this is what happened. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit critical of, of Bioware here in EA. A little bit critical of them. Uh, the The original marketing plan for this game was to have content creators, uh, Destiny Two guys, right? So it's weird. You see, you see, in you see in this article, if you read this article, saying that like Destiny was not the game that they wanted to compare this to, that it was kind of like full pot to talk about Destiny, but then they gave EA access special trips to see the game to a bunch of Destiny 2 streamers. Well, they, 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 they kind of thought it was, right? So we're, we're, we're seeing with, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred hours in the game that it's really not a looter shooter yet. It's more of an action, action RPG. Uh, the closest thing they do to call it a looter shooter, and yeah, Bioware grabbed Destiny 2 guys hoping to get views, hypes. Yeah, exactly. And this was their mistake, is, is that they thought that grabbing a bunch of Destiny 2 streamers with, you know, hundreds and tens of thousands of followers and viewers, that they were going to drop Destiny 2 
to play Anthem. Well, no, these guys are not going to do that. They're not going to do that. They're not going to drop the game that they have a huge community for, that they have hundreds of thousands of, of, of viewers every day on Twitch and hundreds of thousands of people watching the YouTube videos to, to, drop, it for Anth to drop it for Anthem. It just wasn't going to happen. And I don't understand why they did that. And I hope, my hope in the future is that they see the people making content still, that they actually kind of uh, watch watch the Twitch directory in Anthem and see the people that are grinding day in and day out on Anthem and maybe give those people EA Game Changer access. Maybe say, hey, you know what? We know that you're dedicated to the game. We'll bring you on to help us with some stuff. We'll give you special access, that kind of thing. And, and realize that there is a grassroots community for this game that is much, much more dedicated than these guys that are just going to you know, drop the game like a hot potato and only come back and make content when there's patches. That's what I said. Just showed that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very weird that they, that they didn't want to use destiny as a reference point, but then they use destiny Two streamers to, to tap for sure. Uh, final. Oh my God. I'm a long time destiny player. And that's why I'm now playing Anthem, not because of the similarities, but because I am currently, uh, disillusioned with destiny and Bungie as a, as a developer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and again, I told people right off the hop, very, very early on, within like within like my first hundred hours of playing Anthem, Anthem is not Destiny, like that is the game that I would at least compare Anthem to, right? It's it's this game is Division, Warframe, and and Diablo, like like Warframe and Diablo and Division Two make much more sense than than Destiny. Right now, it's an action adventure with RPG. Yeah, I agree, Franchi. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Anthem is an action RPG. Yeah, action adventure with RPG elements. I completely agree. Um, so the latest, the uh, the latest uh, big content creator who said that he was dedicated to the game, and yes, I am calling him out on my program here, is uh, Destin Ligari. I don't know if you guys know who this guy is. Um, the Destin channel. I was watching him today. This guy used to have a show, formerly, called uh, uh, Freelancer. What was it called? Freelancer Radio or something like that. Freelancer Radio or something like that, I believe. Um, and now they have changed the name of their show to Loot Drops. And this is with um, with uh, Arquez and Dantix. Uh, Dantix, again, another content creator who dropped Anthem uh, at the Freelancer chat. Thank you, Flying Wraith. Yes, Freelancer chat. Uh, Eric's uh, did uh, Anthem content for much, much longer than many of the big guys did. Dantix, I don't know how long he did content for, but uh, but for, for not much longer. Yeah, and I, and I would agree with that, guys. Eric still says, yeah, but it's only during updates. I would say, like, the most legit out of the big guys here is, is Eric's. Uh, so they changed the name of their show to Loot Drops. To Loot Drops. So let's be honest about what this actually is and the, the big problem with content creation from these bigger guys, right? Is Loot Drops is an easy way for them to cover Anthem Division, Destiny, and Borderlands only when stuff comes up that they can make content about okay let's be clear again this guy has dropped anthem he's dropped anthem he talked about it today he's so mad and upset about the kotaku article and he's mad and upset about this and and about bioware and and the state of the game and and da -da 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 -da. he said this today on his show so my question is for destin if you're so upset and mad about it why not do something about it Yes, it did. It changed the loot drops. Yes. Why, why not do something about it? Why not get involved? Why not continue to support the game that you know has a community out there that you know maybe is not having the greatest time right now, but like get behind the game? Because this guy, you know, two months ago said, oh, Anthem's amazing and I'm behind it. And they were given special access. Now, keep in mind, too, this guy works for IGN. He also works for IGN. So there's something to that as well, too. 
Destin. <laughs> yeah. Check the chat here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so again, let's be clear. This was this was a very interesting way for them to go. Oh shit, we're not getting the clicks and views that we want. Specifically, being an anthem channel, and we need ways to uh, be able to play all these games and make content when we want, when updates come. So again, let's be very clear that when there is anthem updates, they this guy will make content and stream anthem. Only when it only when it's a good opportunity to do so. So when I tell people support the people that are here now that are streaming the game day in and day out, I guarantee you this week, the at the end of this month, when there's new content for Anthem come out, this guy's going to be streaming it for sure. Anyways, that's my little uh, my little my little hit piece for the day, and kind of going a little bit savage because quitting is easier it doesn't say much about his character right right and it doesn't say much about the character of of many content creators that have dropped the game as well too it doesn't really say much so again support the people that are here now support the people that are making content i have done eight episodes of this show so far i do it every single sunday and guess what next sunday next sunday guess what we're going to be talking about Put it in the chat, guys. What what are we going to be talking about next Sunday on the Tarsus Tavern? What game? What game? What game are we going to be talking about? A N T H E M. Red Dead. <laughs> no, nah, we're going to be talking about Anthem. We're going to be talking about Anthem, guys. Borderlands. Nah, nah. The only the only thing. The only thing that I might switch up is I might do that Devil May Cry playthrough because I want to do it so bad. But anyways, yeah. Um, and, and if you go to YouTube again, I don't know what the state of Anthem YouTube is, but it's probably a fucking trash, trash fire too. That's not bad. It's basically it's basically like build videos. It's it basically it's either, it's either build videos or it's some. Anthem is terrible video. So please make sure that you're supporting everybody here that is here now that is making content for the game. Uh, and I think that's really all that I wanted to kind of talk about. I generally leave the talk show portion about an hour to an hour and a half. So we are just under an hour. Is there anything out there in the chat that we wanted to talk about today? Let me bring up the Savage Squad Discord. And maybe we can uh, talk about some stuff in there. Um, I would like to definitely give you guys some opportunities to talk about what you guys want to talk about. So any questions in the chat related to our topics today or anything else that you want to uh, discuss? Mr. Matty Fresh says, ooh, Pilot Data Error is still happening almost after two months after launch. Is this still a thing? Two times in 45 minutes? Yeah, so this is definitely disappointing, guys, that uh, the Pilot Data Error still happens and i hope that with these uh with these new uh patches that this definitely gets sorted out let's try i love how anthem just started following the the strider trails in free play awesome i only watch positive videos about anthem perfect uh m2 alpha sorry doesn't that make more sense in the longer overall business model being content creator there needs to be content create and at this time there's not much to create on anthem right and that's why they made this change the problem the problem m2 becomes is that when these guys come back and they're like oh i love anthem this update's great oh my gosh i am so you know uppity uppity on this game and they're really not they're not they're not really it's it's for me the problem is that it's opportunistic so it's very very opportunistic to come back only when there's content and when there's only when there's when there's patches because again these guys make money off of clicks right so essentially these guys are only coming back to games when they can make money off of it whereas somebody like myself or somebody that has been streaming this game since vip demo i, I don't care i don't care if i have a hundred subs on my channel I don't care if I have five subs. I don't care if you guys cheer 100 bits a week. I don't care if you cheer 10,000 bits a week. 
I love this game and I, I, I love the long-term potential of this game. So money for me is not a factor where some of these bigger guys are coming back literally only when there's an opportunity to make money and only when there's an opportunity for clicks on videos. Right. Yep. They come back thinking their negative videos were the agents of change. Right. Right. Just like Mr. Angry Joe. Mr. Angry Joe probably thinks he's like the messiah of Anthem. If I were to have a summit like Bungie has with Destiny, I think that would be a great idea. A great idea. I mean, yeah, so let's and let's and let's make let's make something clear, right? Is that businesses are created to make money, right? Bioware needs to make money, EA needs to make money. Um everybody needs to make money. Thank you for all the gift of subs, by the way, in the chat happening right now. Thank you, Cherry Blossom. Thank you, uh Barrior for that gifted to Franchise. Content creators need to make money. That's right. They they do, I agree, but isn't there also something to be said for integrity too? You know, uh, uh, people people go to content creators that they trust, right? They need to be able to go to content creators that that they trust, that are knowledgeable on the title that they're making a video or streaming. There there is that aspect of it too, right? Because a lot of people will go to a content creator to try and determine whether they should spend that sixty, seventy, eighty dollars on a game. And for me, it's very, very important that there is some sort of sense of integrity there. So if this guy here, if this Destin guy doesn't come back, let's say let's say the content doesn't drop until the end of the month. So this guy is not gonna play Anthem for one, two, three, three weeks and two days. And then he comes back at the end of the month talking like he's an expert. For me that's a problem. Honestly, he doesn't pay any of the bills. Well, I I would disagree, man. I work I work in sales, Maddie. I've worked in sales for eight years, uh, selling hundreds of thousands of dollars of product for an international company. And the number one way, the best way to sell to people, is to be honest to them. Because people aren't stupid, and they know when you're bullshitting. So if you see a content creator that drops Anthem, and then in three weeks they come back with a video. All about how they love Anthem and this new update's great. Now I've been playing it, playing it, playing it. I, I I don't feel like the public is stupid. I don't think the community for Anthem is that stupid to not realize, hey, this guy kind of dropped off the face of the planet for a while. And this is for me again a reason why I wanted to bring this up is that I'm gonna be the guy with integrity all the time, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play this game and not drop it. I may switch from stuff once in a while, but. You, you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be honest with your audience. And a lot of the time when these big guys drop games and only come back for big patches, that's what they're doing. They're not being honest and integral with their audience. The same in my shop. If I can't get a supply cheaper, I will if my supplier won't supply at that price. Uh, I mean, that's kind of... I mean, that that's business, but again... Relationships matter. Honestly, it doesn't always pay the bills, but going as far as you possibly can with integrity has meaning. Yep. Uh, the quartering. The quartering is a um, terrible human being, and I hope nobody here watches any of his content. <laughs> that guy is like scum of the earth. Honesty is key, but staying with someone uh, that is not providing your need in the business is good sense, not yet. And, and M2, I agree. What these guys did with this is smart. It's smart. Don't get me wrong. But please, the problem is, is that let's say there's a new looter shooter that comes out. Okay. Let's call it, I don't know, looter, looter shooter beyond. Okay. So let's say looter shooter beyond comes out and this guy says oh i love this game this look game looks great i want to highlight it and, and and focus on it and that kind of thing and he gets all sort of access and, and and sends you know lots of you know requests for information and and he gets sent on trips and money is spent right that's the thing too that people don't realize is that is that bioware spent a lot of money flying these destiny 2 creators out to these events 
So they spend all this money on this guy, you know, for for looter shooter beyond, and then he does this again, right? Let's say that the the, the the game fumbles a little bit. There's not much content, and then he does this again, right? So at what point do we take it that this guy is just leeching onto any game that he can, draining it dry, and then if it doesn't give him what he wants, then he just drops it. What what sort of integrity do we have with that? For me. It's not, it's not very good. Uh, I troll him hard. Savage uh, quartering. He lives a hop, skip, and a jump for me. Oh, Franchi. That's spicy. It's funny you say Beyond. Is that the original game? Yeah, it was. The original name for Anthem, for sure. Uh, this community has been overly overwhelming, possibly from what I've seen. Yeah, yeah. The Savage Squad community here is super, super positive. Bioware, though, isn't blameless. They have made many mistakes that have not helped their cause. You know, and I agree. Yes, uh, Josh, I'm not putting any, you know, sort of like angel halo around Bioware. And, and I hope moving forward that they will see some of the errors of their ways in terms of content creators and that kind of thing. And that they will maybe see the people that are still here and the people that are still making positive content for the game and they'll bring them on intent wink wink okay guys is there anything else that uh we want to talk about here we're just a little over an hour again this is like a super super quick uh super super uh quick uh edition of the tarsus tavern usually we go for about an hour and a half um, if there's nothing else that anybody wants to talk about, we will move on to the, uh, the gameplay section, open Q&A. Uh, but the more you play, your opinion can change. Like, for example, my view on Anthem has changed. Do I wish it would get better with every update? Yes. So, I mean, I get why people come back and then leave because we hope it gets better. But honestly, it doesn't, so they move back away. True. Yes, Rio. An Anthem update tomorrow, yes. When do the drawings for the giveaway happen? Uh, we can do it here soon. I think Anthem is in its pre reaper Soul stage. Yep. Just have to get by over time, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 you know what, Chinhold? Actually, that's a really, 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 really great comment. And I, I believe that Anthem will have its reaper of Souls moment. It will have a reaper of Soul, reaper of Souls moment for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, it drops uh, tomorrow, I believe. Like, it depends on your on your time, uh, your time zone. I think it's, like, in the afternoon for us. So that's why I'm going to be on tomorrow at 7 p.m. playing it. Content is there. They're drip-feeding content to give more dev time. Yeah, and you know what, Franchi? That, that is likely true. That is likely true. But overall, guys, like I said, support the people that are here now. Support the content creators that you see in the Twitch directory. Please, 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 please. So again, uh, if there's nothing else,